Hey horse lovers, welcome back to Free Spirit Equestrian. So in today's video, I am gonna be talking to you about my entire equine wellness plan. And what I mean by that is I'm gonna show you what I do specifically for my horses for not only their well-being, but their health too. So spring is a time where we do a lot of things at once because of course we're gearing up for the busy season, but I do all these things throughout the year as well. But I wanna show you step-by-step, -step, section by section, what I do for the horses with different professionals, both on a holistic wellness level and a medical standpoint too. So let's get started. Throughout this entire video, you're gonna see over the last two months when these professionals came out and I'm gonna talk to you about different portions of the horse's wellness and their care, okay? So you're gonna get to see kind of like a collaboration of all of this. And I wanted to make this video because I feel like it's gonna be educational or beneficial. Just if you're getting into horses, you have to understand what goes into them, all of the time and the money and the effort, and not even that, but the scheduling, the planning. I mean, it is a lot of work when you have a horse, let alone an entire herd. So currently I have 11 horses but I really wanted to put this together. So we're gonna go back to a few weeks ago and I hope you enjoy this entire process and video. All right, horse lovers. So today we have the equine chiropractor and the equine massage therapist coming out to the farm. Body work is a huge component when it comes to equine wellness. And the reason I have both of them coming today, two professionals, is because the massage really helps to loosen up the horse's muscles before they get an adjustment by the chiropractor. Now we will do this every three to six months, depending on the horse, sometimes more often if they really need it as in once a month. So I'm really looking forward to showing you this process today and showing you this piece of our equine wellness plan. All of the horses besides the foals will be getting done today. I will probably get the foals adjusted the next time around. I do body work with them myself, but I don't think I want to get them adjusted today. Plus that's just so many horses in one day. But in the summer, I do plan on getting their first chiropractic adjustment and their first professional massage. Everybody else is gonna be done today. So you're gonna get to see it. I'm so excited to show you and I hope you learn a little bit. Now in regards to body work, we also do some myofascial release and at times we will use acupuncture as well and other methods. There are so many different things you can do for horses when it comes to body work. So many different types of therapies, but those are are our most common practices. And I think this is basic care. So some people see that as a luxury. And I mean, horses are a luxury in themselves. I mean, I, that's just be honest. But when it comes to caring for them, especially when you're riding them or you have school horses or anything, you need to be taking care of them. At least that is my opinion. And this is just basic equine care. Mushu, you like that? So first up is Mushu here. And this is Julia. So this is actually our first time using her. I'm very excited and yeah, everybody's going to get a nice little massage today. Are you being a boy Mushu? And then Aaron is here to help assist. <laughs> Mushi, are you being good? Oh, he's happy. Are you noticing any specific areas on him? Low back. Yeah. Area, yep. Bit. Of course, like his jaw, like up by his face. Yeah, he does hold tension in there sometimes. We do a lot of hyoid releases, but cool. And we have Dr. Sam here today. So she is the chiropractor. She's going to warm Mushu, or not Mushu, Zazu up a little bit with the massage gun. I did buy one of those too. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're just so handy to have. Around. They really are. Zazu's already sleeping, but that's typical. <laughs> so Julia, oh, Mushu's mustaching you. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. So it's really great because she can do the body work, the massage work. And then Dr. Sam does a little bit too, and then they get adjusted. So they're all loose and that holds their adjustment a little bit better. Or am I making that up? No, you're spot on. <laughs> spot on. You can't, uh, I always say they're not just skeletons, right? And they're not just muscles. So addressing both is like crucial. Yeah. Makes the adjustment go a lot easier too if their muscles are nice and loose. and. That's true. They're kind of not as no, tight. Yeah, no tension. That's awesome. Do you get like spoiled every day? Yes. 
He says, I have a job, but I am very loved. He's like, work? This isn't work. See, I'll like, take it. He's a good boy. Are you enjoying those pellets? Oh, you're being nice. Look at you. Now Mushu is getting adjusted. Oh my. I have no treats for you. I have no treats for you. He's, he just wants to like play with everything. He just wants to rub his elbow on the everything. <laughs> He's just a big stuffed animal. He's like, oh my gosh. It's okay. Yeah. I feel better, huh? All right, Mushu's getting his back adjusted now. You could eat dinner on that back. Yeah. Good job, Mushu. You are definitely a thick boy, huh? Thick. It's like riding a, a barrel. Couch. Trust me, when I first started riding him, I was like, holy cow. Like oh, for though. sure. He's so chill. So he got warmed up with the massage gun, and now he's getting an actual massage, and then he'll be adjusted. Now Arlo is getting the massage gun warm up. Liking that. Zazu's still getting the works over here. Sorry you have to work on this crazy wild horse. Yeah, he's, he's a little bit intense over here. Very unmanageable. <laughs> I think he's moved an inch. <laughs> he did stretch one time. Oh my gosh, Zazu. What are we going to do with you? We got Jiminy in getting brushed up. Eating his breakfast. Working errands today. Yep. <laughs> and we even have Kyle in action today. Is this your Barbie horse? Yep. You make me do this because you're too short. <laughs> Lumiere is getting braided while he waits for his massage and adjustment. Kyle helped. I helped. Let's do a bubble braid on his forelock. I'm glad you like doing hair. So I just was saying that Lumiere has personal stylist. He has Aaron and Natalie, well, and me. So she's working on that side now. And um, yeah, we're just doing like a little running braid. But what I wanna do next time is basically do like a zigzag up here and it'll almost look like four braids. Like it'll be cute, but this works. This will last a few days. <laughs> All right, now Zazu's getting his adjustment. He is so chill. He's in the zen. He's like, I'm gonna sleep. So do you use him for lessons yet? Yeah. He's going on, right? Yes, he's very curious. All right, we got Jiminy. He's gonna get warmed up with the massage gun. All right, Jiminy's getting his adjustment now. He's a little stiff but this is why we're doing this. You're such a sweet boy, so pretty. All right, now Gaston is getting his massage. Yes, you are. Seems like you're much better. You are being a good boy, Arlo. Good job, Jiminy. Ears are going forward, relaxing. So another part of equine wellness is sanitation. And obviously we do this often, but we're scrubbing out troughs today and buckets because it is gonna get colder, but today's an okay day. So I figured we'd do that. And it's rare that I have somebody helping me outside of lessons, but Today was a full busy day with all the stuff going on. So Aaron's here, putting her to work. <laughs> no, but honestly, I really enjoy just taking care of the horses and doing chores like this. It's really fun. At least I think so. I mean, that's what Aaron's like, are you doing anything fun this weekend? I'm like, I mean, I'm riding and, <laughs> and feeding horses, if that's what you mean. Yeah. You said, thank you. That was nice. Nice jaw releases. 
he's like, I don't know what she just did, but I like it. Good boy. <laughs> His muzzle. See, I just did that hold on the inside of their upper lip, and he, like, loved it. Yeah, I love doing that. That's so good. Another part of equine wellness is salt lick, which Mushu was just licking. So sometimes I'll do Himalayan salt blocks, like in their stall. And then sometimes I'll just do the plain salt, which they actually seem to really like more. Yep, so that's a big part of the wellness. Can you lick the block for us? No, you're not gonna demonstrate for me? Good. Good job, Mushu. Lick it up, buddy. You're immediately going for your fresh water, huh? We scrubbed it good. Well, Aaron did. <laughs> good girl. Gaston, getting your adjustment now. You're such a good boy. His green lips. Okay, Belle. Yeah, you're it's okay. Yeah, you are. We're gonna try the massage gun with Belle. Do you want what do you think of that massage gun, huh? Yeah. Belle is actually doing really well with the massage gun. I'm pretty surprised because sometimes she can get freaked out about stuff like this, but she did great. And then Beauty is getting her warm up with the massage gun. She's like, you're no fun. You're no fun Such a cutie. Mom. So Beauty's getting the works too. Get her all ready. Tuned up. Up for me. Good girl, Belle. She's like, that's my armpit. <laughs> so we're gonna adjust beauty in here just because it'll keep Belle happier. Well, and beauty too. Yeah, oh, good girl. Should I keep doing that? She's so sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Being good girl, beauty. Now beauty's getting her massage. Good girl. Good job, Belle. That's weird stuff, huh? Now she's getting a nice grooming session. We got Bagheera over there getting warmed up with the massage gun. Beauty's getting her massage. Getting the works today. You're very sweet. Lumiere is very distracted by Bell over here. <laughs> He's just so good, huh? Today is equine dental day. So most of the horses were actually done in the winter, early fall. So we only have a few horses that are getting their dental today. And equine dental is such a huge component when it comes to equine wellness. And I definitely wanted to show you this because it's so important. If you don't have teeth, you don't have healthy teeth in a horse and good equine dental care, then you're gonna have a lot of issues down the road. So this is a vital aspect of basic horse care. 
Now I use an actual veterinarian and his name is Dr. Tom Johnson. He is phenomenal. So he's gonna be coming, he brings a trailer and everything. You're gonna to get to see the entire experience. So the horses that are getting dentals today, it's gonna to be Belle, so she's going first, and then Miss Beauty, Lumiere, and if we have time, Zazu. So Zazu was done in May. So worst case scenario, him and the foals will be done in June if we run out of time today, but that is the plan. So the foals will be done in June, Zazu will be done either today or in June, and everybody else is up to date. So they will all be done again in the fall, early winter. Now there is so much more to equine dental than just a float. So horses get sharp points on their teeth, okay? And you have to essentially file them down in very simple terms. But we're gonna be doing so much more than that. And we're gonna talk about this today and you're gonna get to see it in action. And it's a very expensive component of equine care when it's done properly. So these dentals range anywhere from $300 to $800 per horse, and they're typically done one to two times a year. Horses that might have more issues or older horses might be done twice a year, but typically it's just once a year. So he's gonna be showing up here pretty soon, and I'm excited to show you today's process. Again, I think it's just really important to talk to you about all of the components when it comes to horses, because it's not just coming out here and riding and you know living in this magical fairy land. Like it's a lot of planning, it's a lot of work, time, money, blood, sweat and tears okay and i am here at free spirit equestrian to keep it real with you and show you all the ins and outs when it comes to horses and plus all of our adventures and stuff so i am really excited about this one though and it's actually a decent day so can't wait to show you because there are power tools that are used during the equine dentals they do have to be sedated so they are sedated right before oh. walking in the trailer and yeah that is just very important when it comes to these kind of dentals because they are invasive but they're going to be overall more beneficial in the long run for the horses the trailer. She's really good about it, actually. Good job, Belle! Erin, as you guys know, the assistant. She has two bosses here today. Yep. Which one do you like better? <laughs> Can't answer that. <laughs> we all know the answer. So Belle is getting sleepy. She's doing good. So you said she's sharp? Yeah, she's really sharp. Okay. Tom is really good, or Dr. Johnson, I should say. <laughs> See, she's ramped up here. Yeah. Wearing, oh, man. Up, wearing up into there too much. Uh-huh. Whoop! Same thing over here. Crazy. You'll feel so much better, girl. Our cheeks back there. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet Belle. <laughs> so, Tom, what do you think is different in what you do with equine dentistry versus others? Like, what's the benefit of of you <laughs> like what did you do with her besides get rid of the sharks just a good throw exam yep so they need to be sedated so that you can do a good exam mm -hmm. not miss things like periodontal disease and, and like her alignment yeah it's awesome mm -hmm. look at you Belle Balancing feet. Yep. And like what I was saying earlier, no hoof, no horse. You don't have good teeth, you don't have a good horse either. It's connected to everything. Look at your little happy lip. All right, it's Lumiere's turn. You'll be good boy. <laughs> All right, Lumiere, I'm very curious to see what's in your mouth and to see how sharp you are. What? I said he's high ramped up here. In okay, the high ramp. Is he really sharp? Yeah. I see that one by his. Hooked right here. Yes. And then Steppy in the back. Oh my goodness. 
You're gonna be, you're gonna like this, buddy. Once it's all done. Crazy. It's actually easier if I put my phone in there to see it. <laughs> all right. Victim number two. <laughs> it's so funny though, because like you can tell, like between the geldings and the mares, like yeah. sedation, like gelding, oh yeah, nothing, gelding. nothing in the brain, nothing in the no, brain, just so funny. A good, time. <sighs> good boy, Lumi. Just checking on Belle. She is still <laughs> out of it, honey. Oh, you're so sleepy. That is not. How did her taste look? She's good. She's yeah. sharp, but she's got a good mouth. That's good. You pretty girl. I tighten myself way in the back. Yeah. See way back. Yeah, a little. Oh, I see. Crazy. Good job, beauty. Very cool. Good job, beauty. Um, the lower. The lower ones. The this, this one is. Oops. Little belt. Oh my gosh, that's so crazy. What? <laughs> <laughs> what tooth is this? Corner incisor. Interesting. No, I don't want it, but thank you. <laughs> 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 All right, now we have Zazu. So this used to be Tom's horse, Dr. Johnson's horse, and then I bought him, and he's amazing. Little Zazu. <laughs> nice little flesh. He has like a heart tongue. It's so cute. <laughs> he's just so cute. You got problems? It's on you. <laughs> The dentals went really well. Now all of the horses are up to date. So he did take a look at the foals and they look really good. So they will be done in the spring. So I'm happy about that. And everyone is just enjoying this warm, relaxing day. So this is again, just another huge part of equine wellness and care and something that you definitely need to do for the horses. Okay, so another component to my equine wellness and care plan for the geldings is sheath cleaning. So we're not gonna show a ton of that here today for obvious reasons, but this is important because you want to clean the sheath. They can get beans stuck up in there, all kinds of different stuff. And it's just very important for the cleanliness of male horses. So this is something that I do definitely once a year, if not every three to six months, okay? So all the geldings are gonna be done today. And I think they're gonna feel a lot better because they definitely need it. This is something you wanna keep in mind if you are gonna get a gelding or a stallion is routine sheath cleanings, okay? It's just important to maintain them and take care of them the best way you possibly can. All right, so she's gonna be here soon. I do have a professional coming out to do it. You can do it yourself. I just prefer to have somebody else do it just because this is what they do. This is their job. And I just feel like it's gonna give the horses the best experience possible. And she's gonna do a great job. So she'll be out here momentarily. Okay, all of the boys got their sheaths cleaned. I was so proud of them. I would say Zazu was the most laid back followed by Arlo and Jiminy was the most dramatic. Now I didn't film for like, again, obvious reasons. And also because I wanted to just focus on the horses and help her out but she did an amazing job okay she did great i loved the service i think it went really well lumiere i was most worried about because he can be sensitive but he was a really good boy you were a gentleman arlo was super good too jiminy like i said he was just super dramatic acted like a mare he was the worst but like still a good boy like he wasn't bad and yeah, everyone else did good. So the boys are taken care of, woohoo. So another very important aspect when it comes to horse care and equine wellness is farrier care. A lot of you may have heard the saying, if you have no hoof, you have no horse. Meaning if you don't have healthy hooves, you don't have a structural standpoint for the horse to flourish and remain sound and healthy, okay? So it is huge. Now, most of my horses are primarily 
barefoot, meaning they do not have shoes on. And I like to keep it that way if possible. I do have one horse that is in composite shoes, which we'll talk about today, and that is Jiminy Cricket. So he is the only one that is currently in shoes. Now, if we are gonna go and ride places that are very rocky, because around here, we don't really have a ton of rocky trails. You know, we have some places that it could get a little rocky, but not overall, so they're not as used to that then I will put on shoes, composites, or boots. But in this segment of the video, you are gonna see all of the horses receive their farrier care. So I'm very excited to show you this. And I actually have two of my farriers coming out today. One is named Tara, the other farrier is John. So you're gonna to get to see both of them in action. I love both of their methods. And I think it's great to have two farriers because Tara doesn't do shoes. And like I said, I do have one horse in composites and I never know when I might need to put shoes on another horse. So you're gonna see them today and it's gonna be fun. It's pretty nice. Out, so I'm looking forward to it. I'll also show you Beauty's trim today, but I'm going to show you the video of when her shoes were pulled last cycle as well. I got to get the horses in to feed and get ready for the farrier to come. So they'll be here very soon. Okay, so Tara is here. <laughs> Everybody's excited that you're a female farrier when they've seen you in my other videos. Oh, they, that's funny. They just love that. <laughs> and as you can see here, Arlo is going to get his hooves done. Okay, I told her I literally hosed off everyone's legs yesterday. So don't say I'm horrible client for the farrier. Like it just is what it is. Like I tried and I failed. <laughs> the weather failed me. So Tara, can you talk about just very briefly what the Beamer blanket does for the horses? Cause you're really good at explaining stuff like this and just very, doesn't have to be super detailed just so people understand the treatment. Yeah, so, so it is a PEMF device. And so what it does is it improves micro, micro circulation, basically. That's amazing. Yeah. And so that obviously helps with everything, really. Yeah. Nutrients, repair, all sorts of things. Yes. And you guys really love it. <laughs> See how he's giving little releases there? That's Arlo's <laughs> little silly releases. <laughs> Perfect. So they'll, most of them will get this done today while they're getting trimmed. So like I said, all my horses are barefoot besides Jiminy currently. And he's in composites, which we'll talk about later. Okay, now we have Bagheera. So she, of course, is also getting the Beamer treatment. She's been doing great and she's still barefoot. So depending on what we do during the year, I sometimes will put composites on Bagheera, but she has been doing really well barefoot. But if we do a lot of trail rides with her, then I probably will put the composites on for summer. But I'm also, you know, taking it slower with her because she is 30. She still has a lot of go and drive. But, you know, I just kind of take it day by day and just listen to what the horse is telling me based on their behavior. She's got pretty decent little feet, though, for her age and everything. Such a sweet girl. All right, now we got Gaston. <laughs> the blanket is like face plant into him. The blanket looks so small on him. So obviously he's getting Beamer too, plus his trim. Literally hosed your legs so hardcore yesterday. And look at this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, now we got Zazu and John is here. So he is gonna get the Beamer treatment as well. The blanket's over there. He's gonna get his trim. You get in the works, buddy. Okay, now Belle is getting trimmed. So John trims her back right leg on the ground, which you've seen, and Belle is also getting the beamer treatment, of course. So yeah, she's getting the works today. Now Lumiere getting his trim. <laughs> He's been doing great barefoot. Yes, you have. You're so pretty. You got lots of feather, huh? He's not going to pick it up. Is it okay in the sand? Oh. Because Belle has equine shivers, she cannot pick up and hold this back right leg. So my farrier has figured out a technique where he trims her on the ground and this has worked wonderfully. So we're thankful for him. I mean, look at it, he's like crafting 
It's like engineering right here. I know, I see you. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. And while Belle is doing well, I still want you to understand that she has equine shivers and that this is what it looks like. I mean, has trouble backing up and turning and holding and lifting the leg, but she has issues lifting her back right leg. However, her left leg does have issues too. We are doing absolutely everything we can for her, but there is no cure or treatment. Only ways to make her comfortable, which is what we are doing. All right, Mr. Mushu. Ooh, two feathers in a row. Mushy, ready to get clipped? That will be nice, buddy. You're like a whole new horse once you're clipped. Okay, so Jiminy is getting his composites plus beamer. So this is dental impression, right? Mm-hmm. That's so yes, interesting. Yes, indeed. Mix these two parts together and it gives you a nice squishy pad. <laughs> and Jiminy is getting a new set of composites right here. He, you can reset them and we got a lot of use out of those last ones. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. But it's time for new. Quite a bit. And I like composites because I feel like they have more give and it allows more flexibility. It allows the, it allows the hoof to flex with yes. like a natural hoof. Exactly. So that's why I like them versus steel. But I have used steel and I'll use steel if I have to. But like I said, Jiminy's the only one with composites right now. If you want to use steel or a shoe with a heart bar in it, mm -hmm. um, if you have any kind of like ligament issues or your foot needs that support and it doesn't want the torque. Yeah, that makes sense. And I actually have composite shoes with full heart bar shoes in them now. Very interesting. Yep, so see he's getting the impression in right now. Crazy. You just want to squish it. <laughs> Okay, now we got Ariel. She's getting her trim. And then Essie will be next. She's like, I should have been first. I know. Look at her just watch. It's actually. I'm just sad that I'm not getting the attention. Good job, love. Good. Such a big girl, Ariel. She looks so big in this. Okay, now we're doing Essie. So we're doing Ezzy here because Belle, you know, I don't want that to be an issue with the weaning process. It's only been a couple months. So Ariel's gonna go do her own thing. Oh, good girl. So Beauty is getting her first, well, trim and we're pulling her shoes. So those are gonna come off. We're deciding if we wanna go full barefoot or put composites on her front. So honestly, it's gonna be John's decision. <laughs> You being a good girl, it's like raining and thunderstorming out right now. Lift your head, Zeely. Such a good girl, beauty. Yeah. Honestly, be okay. Barefoot? Going barefoot. Okay. She has a lot of height and depth. On her feet. <laughs> a quiet person. No, talk loud. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, she's standing up on her heels. She's not run on her. Okay, good. So, so they did okay farrier work, I, you think? Yeah, they're pretty decent. That's awesome. See? That's good, girl. Beauty's first trim slash shoe pull and now today has gone really well. So she's been doing great barefoot. And as you can see, she is also getting the Beamer treatment. I'm just so happy that she settled in so well at Free Spirit Equestrian and she is just a gem. I absolutely love her. Okay, so you have seen a lot so far. You saw the chiropractic, the massage, the dentals, and the farrier, and all different types of aspects. So today, actually, the vet is coming out to pull Coggins, and she is going to collect my fecals. And she's just gonna give the horses like an overall wellness exam and just make sure they are looking good and that their heart rate is good, all of that, okay? So the reason that we collect the fecal samples 
is because we want to test to see what their egg count is. And if they have a high egg count, they most likely have parasites. Now, I am not the person that just deworms my horses every few weeks because the reasoning behind that is horses are developing a immunity to the dewormers. So the issue is if they actually have parasites or a high egg count, the horses, again, are so used to getting these different dewormers or the same dewormer that it no longer will kill the parasites. So this is why I always do a fecal test for my horses, either you know one or two times a year, or if I get a new horse, or if there's an issue or something like that. Now, if I get a new horse, I will typically just deworm them just in case they have something, but I don't do that on a regular basis. And what I like to use is the Panicure Power Pack. So it's for five days straight. You can like check that out and research it, but that is what I do to control you know, the egg count within my herd. So I actually gathered all of those fecal samples yesterday. I'm not gonna show that because it's obviously gross, but honestly, it took a lot of work because I had to wait for every horse to poop. I had to you know, put them in the stalls and horses do poop a lot, so it wasn't that bad, but then collecting them and I put them in Ziploc bags and labeled them. So I'll get those results sometime soon. And then in regards to the Coggins, pretty much if you're gonna take your horse anywhere, like a show or camping or something like that, you need to have a Coggins. And obviously it's just a good idea to do that anyway. So we always have a Coggins. You get them once a year. And anytime I get a new horse, I get a Coggins too. Like technically, you're supposed to always have a Coggins when you sell a horse, okay? So, you know, sometimes people don't always do what they're supposed to. However, all of my horses have Coggins and we're just updating them now because most of them expire this time of year, which is when the vet comes out to do that specific task. Now, if you're wondering what Coggins is, go ahead and research it and look it up. That is my homework for you. And again, just to go into more detail, this is the time where my horses get their annual exams. Okay, their heart rate is checked, their vitals. If we have any concerns or issues, they're discussed with the vet. They're getting their Coggins and their fecals, okay? So it is basically their overall wellness exam. But of course, if we notice any issues with the horses throughout the year, they then are looked at. Okay, but this is just kind of our one-time overall basic wellness exam. Just wanted you to understand that they get everything they need. Okay, He's like, I know what's happening. I know, but you're also very brave and you know it's just a tiny poke. He's like, ah, uh, that was the worst thing ever. You know it is just a tiny poke, right? You're so pretty. He really is so pretty. Okay, so the vet came out. You saw a few clips. Everything went really well, so we'll get those results back. Most horses do not have like a positive result for Coggins or that would be really bad. They'd have to like call the state USDA, like it'd be a disaster. But typically a horse doesn't have that, okay? So no worries regarding that. But yeah, everybody was really good for getting their blood drawn and she took the samples. So now what I wanna talk to you about is nutrition. I have recently completely switched my horses to an all forage based diet, okay? So I'm gonna show you specifically what I switched them to and talk about why. I found something fantastic because when I originally switched them, I was just doing alfalfa pellets, but they took forever to soak and completely break down, which I don't mind soaking, obviously. I always soak, but it was a really, really like several hour process. And honestly, it just didn't make sense. So I found something that's even better that I like more, plus I'm adding in a balancer. So let's talk about it. Now, the reason I switched to a forage-based diet is because I wanna get my horses off all of the processed and commercial feeds. I think that they are designed to eat forage, so why not switch to that diet? However, we have to add in a balancer because this forage-based feed is not fortified, fully fortified and they need to have their vitamins and minerals. Like I was originally feeding a different feed. However, it still just has a lot of sugar and starch and all of the processed food. So I wanted to switch them to this. So this is what I currently have my horses on. It's called Unbeatable Feeds and this is their forage based feed. So forage only, that's all it is. And it is grain free. Okay, it gives them energy, but they don't get hot or anything. Very, very easy to feed. I'm gonna actually show you the pellets, but you can kind of see them there. They're a lot smaller. And what it is is alfalfa, beet pulp, and flax. Now, I like this feed a lot better than the straight alfalfa pellets because they're so much smaller and they break down so much easier. So depending on the horse, um, it just depends how much I give them, but they don't need a lot of this. They get 24 seven round bales and hay, okay? So this is essentially just to give them some nutrients, but to mix with their balancer, which is the most important. 
but I'm loving this. And I am not sponsored by them, okay? So I am just sharing with you what I have recently switched to for my horse's diet, okay? And it's about $25 a bag. I actually order it through Tractor Supply and then you can get it delivered to your home or go pick it up. I am really liking it and the horses are actually eating it. Now, the most important thing is your balancer. So these are all the horses' vitamins and minerals. They also have a salt lick, but this is the best way to make sure they're getting everything they need. And I use Vermont Blend, okay? And I order it in the 25 pound bags. I order a few at a time because obviously, I have to order in bulk for the amount of horses I have. If I have a horse that needs a little bit more weight or fat in their diet, then I will add in more flax. Like I said, the unbeatable pellets, they do have flax in them, but this is just another way to support them. I will also feed vitamin E and I have this same one, except it has selenium and vitamin E because oftentimes in Michigan, our soil does not have enough selenium. It lacks that, it's deficient. So I'll feed that. I also will feed cocoa soya or this Go Mega Supreme, like coconut oil, if the horse also, again, needs more fat and magnesium pellets or leaves, just in case. Kyle's tools are here because he was doing stuff in the barn. <laughs> so those pellets take literally no time to soak. They break down in a couple minutes and the horses just gobble them up. So when I first completely switched to all forage, the horses were slightly picky, but now they're not at all. And they eat the Vermont blend too because some horses won't eat the balancers easily. Like I said, I've been feeding this for several weeks now and I have noticed a change in my horses. Their coats are shinier just beyond their spring shed and they're just energy levels just seem so much more balanced. Like they're not hot, but they have more energy, but it's in such a positive way. And this is the best thing I could have ever done. So I'm really happy that I switched them to this. Now, like I was saying, my horses get 24 seven hay. So I do feed round bales. I'll feed square flakes in the stall. Like if they go in there, which my horses are out 24 seven, which is another huge aspect of their equine wellness. My horses are turned out 24 seven. There are always situations where horses need to be stalled and sometimes long-term situations, but in general, keep your horses out. They are meant to be in a herd. They're meant to be outside. They want to be outside. And I just think 24 seven turnout is huge, okay? So the reasons they go into the stall, they might have lessons that day, or you know they're eating their food, or maybe they have an injury or need rehab. Like there's all different types of reasons. And I absolutely believe horses should be trained to be okay in stalls, okay? But I think they have their time and their place where 24 seven turnout should always trump that. So I feed 24 seven round bales. Um, and I have the hay huts just to keep their round bales dry and the sun doesn't bleach them or anything like that. So I will feed my horses first and second cutting. And essentially what that means is first cutting has a lot of Timothy grass and some orchard where the second cutting has a lot of Timothy and alfalfa. So the second cutting is typically richer. It really just depends on the breed of horse, their age, their level of training, what they're doing. Uh, what their nutritional needs are for a specific individual based on that horse. But yeah, that's what I feed. And like I said, they have access to forage and or grass 24 seven. So we are opening up our pastures soon, but you've gotta be careful with horses being on grass 24 seven. If they're on too much grass, they can actually founder and get laminitis. They can develop all types of metabolical issues. So you need to be very conscientious. The longer the grass is, typically the less sugar content is involved, okay? So that really short spring grass, the horses are always gonna go to that first because it has the highest sugar content and it tastes the best. However, that is terrible for them. So I always have to wait until my grass is long enough where the horses aren't gonna have issues with that. Plus, all of my horses are exercised on a very regular basis and they're pretty fit. So I personally have not had issues with grass because I manage it. But I think it's important for people to know you don't just throw horses out on a lush pasture. Some horses literally can't be on grass or they will die. They have insulin resistant issues. And I just think you have to be understanding and recognize that grass isn't always good. Also in today's video, I am wearing my Ride and Rosy lipstick topped with my Galloping and Glitter lip gloss. So if you wanna support Free Spirit Equestrian, this is the best way you can do it. We have Equestrian themed makeup, bitless bridles, and we have more coming. So you can check that out in the comments and the description. Thank you, horse lovers. All right, horse lovers. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this collaboration of equine wellness videos. I hope you learned something. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of an idea of what I do for the horses in regards to that plan. 
And of course, there's so much more that goes into it. I just wanted to give you some more of a overview and talk about some specifics and share some of the financial aspects of it. It's gonna vary anywhere you go. Different horses require different things, but this is just something general that I do for everybody. If you like Free Spirit Equestrian, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything Free Spirit Equestrian or any updates, and I'll see you next time. Bye!